So I imagine you're pretty excited. We're about to actually start building Android projects. So at this point, you should have the Android development environment installed. The Android development environment is called Android Studio and it's specially configured for building Android projects. Now you could use the text editor and a command line, but that's all really difficult. Most people I know who develop for Android do use the Android Studio. So I've given you a project to import. It's called First Project. We're gonna go ahead and import that and we're gonna use that to go through some of the Android Studio to familiarize you with it. Let's get started. So you can see First Application here in my previous, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to Import Project right there. Click that and then locate the First Application Project Make sure you're just in the folder. You should see an app folder, build.gradle, exactly what you see here with mine, and then click open. So in a few moments, the environment's going to wake up and you're going to actually be inside of the Android Studio. And you'll see first application. It's the name of the application right up here. So there's a couple of windows here that are important. This is your project window here on the left. And inside here, you can navigate through your project. So if I open up the app, and we're not gonna worry right now about the manifests. The manifests are essentially an XML with all the different settings that you'd need to set up for when your application goes into the Android App Store or gets distributed. And you can see here, there's like links to the icon and different labels and things like that. We'll worry about that later on in the course. For right now, we're gonna to go to the Java folder and you'll notice there's three Java classes here. One has got Android test and one just test after it. Go ahead and use the first one that doesn't have any of that. You can open the little arrow here and you see main activity. Double click on main activity and the Java code is going to load for the main activity. Activities are essentially screens or code that goes with screens. So this is the main one. This project only has one activity, so it is the main one. And the main activity is where your project starts, just like a main in any class. So before we go through the code here and take a look at kind of what's used to put this together, I'm gonna to click this arrow right up here. Now, what that arrow is gonna do is it's going to run in an emulator, the actual application. Before you do that though, you need to have an actual emulator on your machine. If I choose this open AVD manager option, these are the virtual devices or Android emulators on my machine. And right now I've got a Nexus S with API 24. That's the version of Android. And it tells you the resolution and the target here, which is the version of Android that's targeted here, 7.0 size on the disc. If you don't have one, you're gonna go ahead and create a virtual device. I'd suggest you don't choose something really current like a Pixel because that's gonna use a lot more resources because it is actually building a version of the device on your machine. By the way here, you can also see that you can use this environment to create for Android TV, wearables, or the Android tablet OS. So you can create virtual devices for any of these. Let's just go with an old Google Pixel here. So I'm just gonna choose Pixel and I'm gonna go through the menus and it's gonna tell me whether I need to download any of the images and API levels here. So these are the different versions of the operating system. I'm not going to download one of these now, but if you click download, you download that operating system and that's what's installed in your device for testing. So and then if, once you finish this, it'll download it and it'll build your actual device. Once your device is built, you can choose that as the target for any code that you run. So now I've got my Nexus device here. You can choose your pixel or make a different one. And I'm gonna choose run app. And you can see the app building down here. And you can see that the build was successful. And we have welcome to framework up here. And it gives us a greeting. And then I can click the change greeting button like this to go through the series of greetings that are stored in here. That's all this app does, is it greets us in several different languages. But it is responding to the change greeting button. It is welcoming us. Now, this virtual device 
is a full Android device. So I actually could click through the different features here and use it because you'll be making apps that might interact with other features on the device, so you have to be able to test them. You can also test on an actual Android device. We'll be setting that up a little bit later on in the course, but you can test on actual Android devices and you'd always wanna do that before you release your actual application. Notice with the emulator here too, we have controls for the volume. We can rotate our device and notice the application rotates nicely and you can still see everything on the screen. Rotate it back to the original. You can use the camera features here, take a screenshot. There's zoom mode. So there's a bunch of features here that help you control the device. You can get more specific with the extended controls. I open this by clicking the three dots here. So for example, we can simulate things like battery level, make the battery low, or we can simulate the camera or the phone. So for example, if I click here with the phone, I click send message, it's gonna send this message to the actual phone from this phone number. And there you can see there was the message just popped up. So this does work as an actual Android device. And the app that we've built does appear here on the Android screen. So it's pretty cool that you can actually have some fun just kind of playing with the actual Android device and seeing how it works, especially if you're not totally familiar with Android, maybe you're an iOS user, it's a great way to become more familiar with how the devices work. My device here is a little bit older, as I mentioned, but you can set up the most current version of the Android operating system. All right, and you can power your device off just like that. And we're good to go. So now we're back here in the code. I'm gonna stop that, clicking the stop button. If we wanted to run the app again, we could just click right there. So let's take a look at our code. And essentially the way Android works is we insert code at different points in the application life cycle, when the screen appears, when it disappears, etc. We're overriding existing Android functions. So that's kind of how we insert code. Let me show you. So here, on create is where I'm inserting the code for this particular application. There's not a lot to it. So on create, when the application is created is when we're gonna run this code. Now I wanna note a couple things first. There's a bunch of imports and I have to import a class for every object that I use. So I used here a button and a text view. So we imported android.widget.button and android.widget.textView. The rest of these were here when I created the actual activity. The template gives you a lot of the code that you need. So don't be intimidated by the amount of code here. A lot of it came in when I created the activity from the template when I created the application. So I don't have to worry about that. I just inserted my code where needed. So what you have to become familiar with is where do you insert the code in the life cycle, which methods do you override? And then you're pretty much good to go. So on create, this gets what's called a bundle, which essentially is a set of properties with the saved instance state, which is the state of the device right now. We pass that to the super constructor for on create using super, because again, we're overriding a method here on create, see override on create. So we have to pass to a super constructor. This sets up the content view and the toolbar and the action bar. All of that was provided for me. Now what I added to the actual application, let's move to a visual display of the device. We can view the actual layout through the project resources. So here layout, I'm gonna to go to activity main.xml. I'm gonna double click that and here we can actually see the visual representation of our project. We've got two individual items here. We've got our text where the welcome messages live, and we've got our button. Notice over on the left, we've got a palette of objects. 
Over on the right, we've got the properties of each object, like for example, the text inside the button says change greeting. A lot of different properties here. Now anything, by the way, I can set here, I can set in the actual XML, which I'm gonna show you in a second, or programmatically using Java. So you can see this is a visual representation. There's also an XML text representation of the layout. Here's our text view. And here's our button. One thing I want you to notice is the text view has an ID text greeting. The button has an ID BTN change. These are values that I gave these individual items up here, the ID, so we could access them through the code. So let's go back to our Java code. And once the content views are set up, now I've got to essentially create the buttons here in the code, or at least references to them. So in the resources here are, is the activity main.xml that I just showed you. And inside here is the button that I created. So button change greeting, which is of the type button, the way I get it out of the resources is find view by ID, r.id, and then the ID that I gave it. So that becomes button change greeting. We did the same thing for the text. TXT greeting, which is a text view type here. We used find view by ID, r.id.text greeting, right? If we looked at the text object here, txt greeting or if we looked in this txt greeting so essentially we're grabbing this out of the resources here we're grabbing that out of the xml and we're assigning it a local java variable name of the type of object so this is a pattern you always follow whenever you put something into the interface in the java you're going to create a link to it declare it by type and then use find view by ID to grab it by its ID. So now that we have the button established, we're gonna set an on-click listener, which is gonna be listening for a click on the button. And the callback function is in this class. It's down here, it's this on-click. Here I have a array of strings with the greetings, hello, shalom, hola, bonjour, peace, and aloha. And then a greeting counter, which is set at zero initially. Each time the button is clicked, we're gonna see exactly where we are in the array. We're gonna increase the greeting number or reset it to zero so we don't go off the end. And then on the text object, right, the text object, this guy right here, we're going to set the text to greetings and then whatever greeting number we're on. So zero, one, two, three, four, etc. So that goes through all the greetings. The rest of this is boilerplate. We didn't do anything with the menus, so we don't need to work with any of these overrides. We'll simply let them be. Let's run the app one more time. And let's grab our emulator. And we can see we can change the greetings there and it goes through our strings or our string array. So the pieces you have to remember here, right? Your main activity is where everything starts. That's your Java. Your interfaces are here in resources and layout. The activity main.xml has two views. It has our builder view on which we could actually add or remove objects from the interface like that. Oops, put that in the wrong place, that's okay. And then an XML version of that backing it up. All right, so that was an initial look at the Android Studio interface. In the next video, we're gonna to work together and build our first application step-by-step. Step. I'll see you there.